Everybody, welcome. This is a topic that comes up so often, and I find it such an important topic to building awesome mental health and fitness. But if we want to work on recovery from mental illness and really work on understanding why we run into struggles with mental health, it is so useful to look at judgment. That is what we are going to do tonight on a, you know, a very practical version of the lab. A lot of you have heard me say this before, but judgment is the first compulsion. And it's the reason we start to look at this stuff is because sure, you can cut out all sorts of compulsions. But one of the things that can often be really distressing for people is that we, uh, we cut out a compulsion, but we're still judging, you know, say, say we're still judging a feeling as meaning that something is contaminated. So we say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do <clears throat> the usual cleaning and decontaminating compulsions I did in the past. So we're like, okay, I cut out the compulsions, but there's still so much anxiety because we're still judging it as contaminated. We're still judging it as bad not to get rid of that feeling of contamination. And this can be one of the reasons that cutting out compulsions, working on better mental health can be so challenging because we continue to judge the internal and external experiences that we're having. Uh, and it really helped me on my own journey of recovery to start to see that the compulsions actually, although it's super important to cut them out, uh, the, the compulsions that I saw started to see as, as being a problem were really just a natural result of the judgments. We judge an experience. Remember, we looked, if you were here last time, we looked at basically this diagram here, right? We have an experience. We slap a judgment on it. We're like, whoa, this shouldn't be here. Or this is dangerous. This is wrong. This has to get fixed. That brings up emotions. Because if we're like, oh, this, this is dangerous, then of course, oh, anxiety comes up. We have a memory, a false memory, whatever. And then we're like, oh, regret. I shouldn't have done that. We start comparing it. So we, something pops up, we judge it. Oh, that's not as good as that. I should have made that decision. We feel regret. And then we do the compulsions as a reaction to the feeling because we want to fix it, right? We want to get relief from it. But that feeling is only there because of the judgment. So if we really want to get ahead of this cycle, we've got to go after those judgments. It's so powerful and useful and effective to target judgment because then we can just have experiences. We can just experience the world and not run off on that like disastrous race to the finish, the finish being in a ditch somewhere crying uh, that we get into when we start judging and doing compulsions and then judging other things and then trying to fix those and then trying to control those and then avoiding this and then checking this and then controlling that. It's exhausting. Hopefully uh, what you'll be able to walk away with after tonight is, is just a, a better understanding of some of this brain machinery. Uh, and it really, when it comes to judgment, it really helped me to think of brain machinery. So we even love that we were talking about parts of the brain there at the beginning, uh, because it really does start to seem like there is this uh, part of the brain that, and I've even, I've even illustrated for you here, this, what you can see here is a brain scan, obviously. Um, this is the part of the brain that does the judging. Inside the brain is this nuclear powered, uh, yeah, probably a lot of you didn't know you have this little uh, nuclear reactor in your brain and it uh, is a label maker and it just slaps these labels on things and it loves it it is so good at it as you can see that was, that was the best label maker i could find on the internet and i i like it i almost bought it because i i was like i had i saw it and i i judged it. i was like i i really like that label maker it's like so many label makers kind of, they look like they're off, they're for an office. But this label maker understands that making labels is industrial, right? You need that rubber padding because like you're labeling stuff and like it's, things are gonna fall on you. And you're labeling awesome things. And just look at all the buttons. You can do so much labeling with that so fast. It's almost as good as the label maker in your brain. People have asked about a, a definition for what is a judgment. 
Uh, and again, because also we hear about this and we're like, oh no, what if I'm judging? Am I judging? Is it good judging? Is it bad judging? What's going on here? Uh, and and just seeing that, you know, we have machinery in our head for making sense of the world. Like we were talking about the limbic system earlier. We we're talking about the brain stem. Yeah, like our brains are there to make sense of the world. And sometimes though, it gets a bit out of control. Uh, and sometimes we are labeling things as things they are not. And when we're struggling with mental health, often that is the case. When we're running into issues with mental illness, we're sticking labels on things and the labels are wrong. And just in general, in life, I think it's useful to see this isn't just about mental illness. When we're running into struggles at work, in relationships, in at school, politics, life, on social media, et cetera, even if you don't identify with having a mental illness, you probably start to see that a lot of the times your judgments are wrong. And when your judgments are wrong, it creates situations that are not very useful to us. And uh, yeah, judgments are just sticking meanings on things, internal things and external things. It's just labeling it. And then we react to that label. That label can bring up feelings. Um, and then we're like, oh, no, you know, because I label something as dangerous, then of course, I'm going to be anxious. Of course, I'm going to want to avoid it and control it. But maybe that label wasn't useful. Likewise, I might label something as desirable. I'm like, I need that. I must have it. It is bad if I don't have that thing. And then we go and chase it. And also chasing that thing just creates a lot of suffering and struggling. It all starts with a judgment, that nuclear powered label maker in your head. Um, I always like it to think of it. It's a lot like uh, Cyclops. If everybody knows Cyclops says like laser vision, but every now and then, you know, something goes wrong where they like someone, he has a visor to help him control his laser vision. But, you know, somebody's always ripping it off, right? Like some, you know, Magneto or somebody's always like getting one of his henchmen to yank off uh, Cyclops' visor and then his laser vision shoots everywhere and burns up everything. And, and that's really what we end up doing with judgments, that it gets out of control. And it just ends up burning up the things we love. Um, like a lot of people, when they run into anxiety issues around relationships, often judgments just go wild, judging our feelings, judging the other person. And uh, too often we can blow up a really great relationship um, just because we burned it up with judgments. Uh, at the same time, laser vision is amazing. And it's, it's not about seeing judgments as good or bad. It's just understanding judgments have very natural consequences. And so it's useful for us to learn how to practice non-judgment as well as we practice judgment. That this is a superpower we want to be in charge of and not just have it on full blast burning up everything in life. So let's look at an example here. First, we have a thought. A random thing pops up in the brain, just going about our day. Probably, you know, probably first thing in the morning, wake up, like, oh, and then boom, a thought. And that's fine because uh, the brain makes thoughts. It's a thought generating organ the same way your gut makes gas. And But then rather than just let it be there and be like, oh, yeah, brains have thoughts. Who cares? Uh, we judge it. And so maybe we slap a label on it like, oh, it's intrusive. Like it, sh it shouldn't be there. Why? Why? Do these thoughts happen? And that'll typically uh, then involve a cascade of judgments, right? Like, so we label it as intrusive and right. We shouldn't have these, you know, maybe we just it's like this violent graphic thought that we're like, this shouldn't be here. So we're like, it, we start attaching meaning to it. Like, this means I'm a bad person because I had this bad thought. Uh, it's ruined my day, right? We start to like look at the whole day. Oh, this is where often it is, you know, like we we're talking earlier about contamination where we see like, ooh, this thought shouldn't be here. It's contaminated my day, right? It's wrecked it. This is bad uh, and we want to control it. And so this brings up feelings like anxiety, frustration, because we're like, oh, I've been, I've been spending days researching how to fix thoughts and they're still there. Nothing is working, uh, you know, because of course, we're struggling with it. We don't realize that all this stuff we're doing is just creating more of the thoughts. 
maybe we're afraid because we're like, oh no, like I've done all of this stuff to get rid of the thoughts and they're still there. Does it mean they're true? What does this mean about me? Will this always be there? Is it always going to interfere in my life? Right? We're starting to do all these other things. We're judging the, you know, the universe of the future despair we might just be like oh i just i just don't want to do anything else because this thought is there and then it goes into the compulsions and those might be the the compulsions we maybe see as stereotypical maybe you decide oh because the in, this bad thought is there today i'm not going to do something i cared about you know i was going to start a project a new project today but now the thought is here so it's a bad day i'm going to wait for a good day right we put it off uh, maybe we do rituals like where we have to fix the thought. Maybe we have to prove, uh, also very common, we try to prove that we hate the thought because we've seen it, but then we're like, oh, I didn't feel bad enough around it. So we actually bring the thought up on purpose just to check and make sure we feel disgusted enough with it, which of course naturally will make us feel less disgusted. So we have to bring up even worse thoughts so we can keep checking, right? All of the compulsions. But it all began with labeling it as intrusive labeling it as bad, labeling it as something that shouldn't be there, right? We whipped up that super powered label maker and we're like, ooh, just slapping labels all over that thought. Everything that came after was a direct result of that. And what I'm bringing these judgments up for is, is just to look across the spectrum of all the different, you know, mental health challenges we can think of. Because you could really, in the same way, so one of the things that you'll often see in acceptance and commitment therapy is that it's what's called transdiagnostic. So acceptance and commitment therapy is used widely across numerous mental illness diagnoses. Um, and also it just got in the NICE treatment guidelines in the UK as well for chronic pain. Uh, and we're seeing it work its way into other uh, kind of physical ailments as well. So transdiagnostic now from, right, Acceptance commitment therapy has been demonstrated to be useful in research across mental illness diagnoses and uh, is now starting to be used in physical illness diagnoses. I would say another thing that we can look at as being transdiagnostic is judgment and therefore also non judgment. We in many ways, when you look at all of the different types of mental health struggles we can run into, judgment is the first compulsion. Right? If we look at something, we look at things like, say, body dysmorphic disorder. Great example of a mental illness where our, our judgments are just totally out of whack with reality. Right? We're judging something, oh, that's ugly, or oh, that's too small, or oh, that's too big, etc., and then boom, we have to like, oh, I have to go do all of this stuff to fix it. But the judgment, our, the label we stuck on it is actually totally incongruous with reality. When we look at things like mania, right? Judging a feeling as being like, oh, right, this means I can do anything. Or I've got to go and do, I'm going to go do all these things I want to do right now. Forget it. Like, you know, the money and stuff, it's going to come. I Like, I feel it. And we judge that as realistic and true, even though it's not. When we look at depression, right? So much of depression is judging feelings, avoiding feelings, then having worse feelings, judging those feelings and avoiding situations, having even worse feelings, judging those and avoiding them until we spiral into a spot where we're just stuck avoiding everything. Non-judgment is seeing things as they are. And that definition of mindfulness that we've, John Kabat-Zinn's definition of mindfulness that we brought up a couple of times, having experiences in the present moment without judgment. Mindfulness is the opposite of judgment. When we're mindful, we're not adding all of that extra stuff to an experience. There's an experience there. But there are many experiences. And we're, we're honest about what the experiences are. And so in many ways, you can look at mindfulness as the practice of coming into contact with reality, with the real world, not the world we construct with the superpowered nuclear label maker in our brains. It's moving past that, peeling off the labels 
and touching the real world. Often when I'll talk about recovery, other people say things like, well, you'll always get the thoughts um, or you, you know, everybody gets intrusive thoughts, but mm, uh -uh, uh -uh. the uh, everybody gets thoughts. And we know from research that everybody gets, yeah, like, Thoughts like, oh, those people are watching me, or oh, I'd really like to hit those people in the head, things like that. Uh, but they are not intrusive thoughts unless you judge them. Because we can have any thought. But if we're slapping that judgment on, we're like, oh, that's bad, I've got to fix it. Then, of course, we're going to struggle with it. Uh, but if we just have a thought and we're like, yeah, thoughts, who cares? Um, the brain's not going to keep doing it because the brain's only gonna throw you thoughts you engage with. Uh, but it really, this is the thing, it really depends on our judgments. And that's why it's so useful to look at judgment too, because as long as we judge experiences, we will struggle with those experiences. But if we cut out the judgments around those experiences, well, one, we're not going to struggle with them because we're not judging them. They just become like any other random thing we could experience. So even if they are there, we're not going to struggle with them. But also, particularly for internal experiences, uh, your, your brain wants to save energy. It's not going to keep throwing up stuff that you don't engage with. A criticism that people will have around meditation or mindfulness, they'll say something like, oh, like, well, I, I practice meditation. I, I'm still bothered by the thoughts. Mm, mm -mm. Because mindfulness is the opposite of judgment. So if you have a thought, and you're like, oh, I hate that thought. Oh, why? I'm practicing meditation. Why do I still have bad thoughts? Uh, you, you have not practiced mindfulness yet uh, because you wouldn't be judging the thought. Uh, so, yeah, why don't we go through this question? So shout out to everybody on Instagram. Thank you. Uh, a whole bunch of people submitted questions on Instagram. I will, I will try to get to all of them uh, tomorrow and Friday uh, and answer those there. Uh, but also I brought a couple of them with us and then we can, we can explore any questions y'all have. This one, how do we make decisions without judging things as good, bad, helpful, unhelpful, et cetera? And, I find, and this, this can often be a challenge um, that people have when the topic comes up, the um, even I, I remember uh, a really hilarious experience uh, I had shortly after I'd moved to Toronto, and there was a, um, a it was I think they still they still have them they have them in all sorts of different places it was called a death cafe, and uh, it's an opportunity people come together and they yeah talk about death. So speaking of bringing up difficult topics, you go and it's to bring up this difficult topic and really discuss it and touch it. And there was, I don't know who it was because this was many years ago. This was like 10 years ago. And so I don't know if it was a very particular um, University of Toronto professor, but there was a, a University of Toronto professor there. And I just remember that component of it. And um, I brought up the topic of non-judgment. And this uh, professor got so upset about the idea of non-judgment. Uh, and he just like started like, get, like getting kind of very angry. And I found it quite strange. Like he like was very angry about the idea that like, you would not judge things. Um, and I think, yeah, people have a, can have a very visceral, angry reaction to the idea of non-judgment or also have a reaction where it's like, okay, I, I won't judge anything. Everything is fine. And it's uh, really useful to see that that's, uh, that's not what it's about. Right? It's about seeing things as they are. And like we've been talking about, non-judgment is such a, such a benefit to creativity. We're very much, we're looking at like, what, what is the awesome thing that I want to create? It really helps me to see that in the past, so speaking of creative stuff, in the past, I would really rely on judgment to do anything. So I basically would do something and then just judge it as like, oh, that, that sucks. That's bad. And rather than be like, oh, like, what is the thing I want to create? Like, what's a good version of that? I'm going to make that. I would, I would just do things and then hate on them. And like, it was very much almost this like, 
practice of sculpting with hatred um, and judgment and values right, are, are about picking a direction that's going to take us to where we want to go. Right? How do we do something well? What is the thing that we want to do? I think we're very good at this with recipes, with baking and cooking. We accept that often we don't know things. So, so we go and we get a recipe and or we ask a friend, right? We eat something delicious. We're like, that's amazing. Can you tell me how you make it? And then they tell us how they made it. Values are about understanding the direction to go where we want to go uh, and then following that. And so I find rather than relying on reactive judgment, it's about proactive values. What is the thing I want to create? What is the thing I want to give? And that, that's what I'm going to put my time and energy towards. We might have thoughts and we judge them. And right now we rely on our fear to tell us that we're a good person. Right? I had a fear about harming somebody and I judged it as bad. Therefore, I'm good. So if I take away that judgment, does that mean I'm going to harm people? And no, because that, that has nothing to do with doing the awesome thing that I value. Just like I don't value hitting myself in the face with a frying pan. This is the example I always use for it. When I make breakfast in the morning, I don't have to go, oh, look, I, I must check to make sure that I judge hitting myself in the frying pan as bad. Because then I know I'm not going to hit myself in the face with a frying pan. No, like, I, just, I just look at like how do I make eggs well? And then I'm going to do that, right? That's about what I value. So we don't have to rely on hatred and fear. But that's very much what we're doing when we rely on judgments, right? Judgments are very much about hate on a thing to get reassurance that it's the bad thing. And then you do something that doesn't give you that feeling, right? Avoiding bad things is not the same as doing awesome things. And then we had the question on how to learn mindfulness skills, because that also is uh, pretty much the answer to this question. How can we improve our skills on non-judgment uh, practice? It's about starting to practice it the same way we would practice any skill. Uh, meditation and mindfulness are awesome supports for this. Meditation and mindfulness are the... Oops, I'm not going to judge the computer for what it just did. Meditation and mindfulness. Very much that uh, practice of having experiences right, and not attaching judgment to them. Right, That's all mindfulness is. Having an experience in the present moment and not slapping labels on it. It's just the experience. And that's it. We have an experience. That's all. It's a practice. Uh, it's starting to see that because we often have pr practiced judgment so much uh, throughout our life for years and decades that we are awesome at it. It is like a reflex. Uh, starting to practice non-judgment is going to feel like learning how to get bad at a sport. It's like you've played volleyball your entire life. You're just used to a ball is coming. Your, your arms shoot out, just hit it, spike it. And now you're going to play football, like soccer. And so now when a ball is coming at you, you can't just automatically hit it. Uh, so it's like that. And at first, absolutely, the ball, the thought, the emotion, the physical sensation is going to be coming at you. You're going to slap it. Uh, and now it's just starting to notice that. Oh, yeah, I did. I see. I just stuck that label on there. Well, is that useful to me? So meditation and mindfulness. But then starting to have that, that question, what is useful to me? What is useful to me? How do I want to spend my time and energy in life? Yeah, Toadsage, great point. Like this, and this is so true, happened so much. He said, I feel like I've been in a lot of situations that I automatically judged as soon as I got in them, which caused me to miss out on creating, staying in the situation all the energy went to avoiding. Yeah, this is the thing. And that's that's actually why I, always, I like the question of what's useful to me. 
to not look at, oh, like I, judgment is this bad thing or whatever. It's just to start to look at, because again, it, it can have its uses. It's, it's an awesome superpower. And it's just starting to look at, have my judgments taken me to a place that's useful to me? Like I'd say like in relationships, for example, I would judge things so quickly and I would end every relationship. And so, but then I would be really upset about not being in a relationship. And I had also had all these compulsions around the fear of being alone. So it was really useful to step back and be like, oh, well, like, I'm always ending these relationships because I judge things as wrong, as like not the right one, not the right feelings, etc. Are my judgments useful to me? Because it seems like I'm making decisions that are leading me to a place which I'm very upset about. And then we just start to see, oh, yeah, like all of these labels I'm sticking on things, I'm wrong. And it felt it was learning, just being able to say, oh, wow, like I'm wrong about like I'm, I could be wrong about all of the labels I'm sticking on everything. Uh, for me, it was a really useful point to be at, to take that step back and, and just start to consider things again uh, with that beginner's mind afresh and be like, well, let's say, yeah, OK. Everything, every judgment I put on everything is wrong. So let's start from scratch, uh, seeing things as they are. Guess what the next question is about? Physical sensations. And I picked this one in particular, and, and you brought up a question here that's so relevant to it. Uh, I'll read out your question here, and then we'll dive into this. It said, uh, sometimes I'm afraid that I would misjudge them in a way. Oftentimes I'm okay with what's going on in my body. However, there are times that I don't trust my judgment. How to separate or distinguish uh, these two feelings? That's, I would say, one of the reasons, like, and this question coming up here is how to stop judging the physical pain of anxiety I feel in my head. It hurts. Uh, but so often what we do, it, it's not just that it's about anxiety. It's we judge physical sensations differently. And we also worry about, like, well, what if... What if I don't judge it and I miss something? And it, and the implication of the, oh, if I miss something is like, I will die. And I probably have a lot of judgments around death. Uh, and so that, that I always bring up with people around this. Um, you, you, the thing you're judging, it, it might be because you're judging something else. Uh, and so this this thing is just the proxy because you believe it will lead to that thing. And particularly on the other thing, you're like, well, no, I am not changing those judgments. <laughs> so then the, the thing that you're worried about now is actually a natural outcome of that. Uh, so look at what else you're judging. And I think uh, on any journey uh, with working on mental health skills, we're always going to come to a different understanding with um, and relationship with death. What judgments do you have? Let's put hold on to you about death. That would always be the question that I would ask there. I mean, it, it could be other stuff too, because it could also be like losing control. Sometimes people will be like judging, maybe did I hear something? Uh, and they might even have, they'll be like, well, there was a time that I, I heard a voice and I went into the room and there was nobody there. What's this mean? And there it's it's actually because they're judging that fear, like we were talking really earlier, the fear of psychosis, the fear of losing control. And so they have all of these judgments around that. So then it's very difficult not to be judging all of this other stuff that they worry could lead to it. And really, really common. So it's so useful to look at, like we often do with the five whys. Uh, if you notice a judgment coming up repeatedly, like a judgment that's really difficult to let go of, why would it be bad to get that judgment wrong? And that'll start to show you the thing that's that's actually going on there. Yeah, it's gay. So you mentioned it. I get so stuck here. Where do you go when it all comes down to the death fear? hypochondria since I was four. This has fueled my OCD experience through and through. I know it comes down to death, but I just don't know where to go from that acknowledgement. Yeah, so I would, I would first look at, like, what are your judgments about death? And it, going back to that usefulness question, um, 
it so it comes up a lot say around judgments um so we'll just put it here again uh what's useful to you what's a useful way to see death because you can see the impact those uh judgments are having on your life and so it's just like i was describing there earlier with relationships where like starting to see oh my my judgments about relationships are interfering with the thing i want to do and so often we have the same experience with death our judgments about death interfere with living our lives and we're so afraid of death because we don't want to miss out on life but then we purposely choose to miss out on life so we can try to avoid death and then we die uh and so yeah what's useful what's a useful way to approach death and at first like we we're talking about earlier it'll feel wrong so i would start there not even getting into like can i do this how will this feel but just starting with what's a useful way to approach death and yeah and be open to wrong ideas ideas that feel terrifying ideas that feel because we're like well no i must hate on it because we believe that hating on it is somehow going to help us live uh, but the result is we just put death in charge of our lives and we spend life hating on death we want to live and we really like living so we should do that so maybe that's it that's a good note to end on let us go and uh, yeah, do do the living um, aware that judgments are the thing that's going to get in the way of that. Judging ourselves, judging experiences, judging like, oh, I can't handle that. If I go and do that, oh, I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then we put it off and we put it off and we put it off. Go and do the things 